Did George Lucas already intend to unveil that Luke and Leia were siblings when they kissed in The Empire Strikes Back? What effect, if any, did toy sales have on the events of Return of the Jedi? Was Darth Vader always going to be Luke's father? Let's take a look at some of the urban legends surrounding Star Wars in celebration of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Welcome to That Sci-Fi Show, the only show filmed on location in my bedroom. I'm your host, Jay Parks. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen all the Star Wars ever, then massive spoilers lie ahead. Once you've recovered from your coma, you should really watch them. All the sources for this video are articles written by Brian Cronin. He's also the author of two fantastic books, Was Superman a Spy? and Why Does Batman Carry Shark Repellent? Buy one of his books so he doesn't sue me. Number five, did the team behind Spaceballs severely limit their merchandise as part of an agreement with George Lucas? Yes. Unlike most urban legends, this one is true. Mel Brooks approached Lucas to clear the parody film before it was made. As part of their agreement, there could be no Spaceballs merchandise that would compete directly with merchandise from Star Wars. Number four, did Lucas add an extra scene to Star Wars to avoid a G rating on the film? Was this alleged added scene the severed arm on the floor of the cantina? Was it the scene that showed Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru's charred corpses? No. However, like most myths, this one does have a little speck of truth to it. No scenes were added to the movie. However, when the movie was rated G, 20th Century Fox did request that the rating be changed to PG. Both the severed arm and the charred corpses were included when the film was submitted to the MPAA for a rating. The movie was given a G rating with those scenes included because at that time the G rating was not so closely associated with children's movies. To prevent complaints from parents and because the G rating was considered to be box office poison, 20th Century Fox decided to take the unusual step of submitting the movie a second time along with a request for a stricter rating. The MPAA then rated it PG. G. Number three. Did concerns over toy sales keep Lucas from killing off Han Solo in Return of the Jedi? This one's most likely true. There was some question as to whether or not Han Solo would survive until the end of Return of the Jedi. Early in production, they didn't know if Ford would even do the film, as he was not under contract to do so, unlike the other main actors. Lawrence Kasdan, who co-wrote the screenplay for the film along with George Lucas, suggested that they pitch Ford the idea that Solo would be killed off early in the film. Lucas didn't care for that idea and Ford signed on with no such assurances. Even still, it appears that there were plans to kill off Han Solo in the middle of the film. According to an interview in the LA Times that Jeff Boucher did with Gary Kurtz, a producer on American Graffiti and the first two Star Wars films, Solo died in the original outline for the film. On top of that, Ford stated that he thought Han Solo should have died in an ABC interview about Return of the Jedi. He stated point blank that Lucas didn't see much money in dead Han toys, so I'm calling this one true. I'm sure if Lucas disagreed with it, he'd have let it be known by now. Number two. Did George Lucas already intend to reveal that Luke and Leia were siblings before they kissed in The Empire Strikes Back? No. While Lucas has never addressed this directly, this popular idea that Lucas had everything planned out from the beginning is certainly a myth, one that Lucas does very little to dispel. Now, I'd like to note here that while they do kiss in The Empire Strikes Back, they also kissed in Marvel's Star Wars comic book series more than once. Previous drafts of the movie script by Leah Brackett make it clear that Luke's sister was not originally intended to be Leia. Brackett even named Luke's sister Neolith at one point in the script, although the name was crossed out. Even after Lucas revised the screenplay, he kept a scene where Luke and Leia discuss their feelings and Luke tells her that she would be better off with Han Solo. Yet another revision even contains a second kiss. According to Gary Kurtz, producer of The Empire Strikes Back, Lucas was toying with the idea of a second trilogy, and when he decided to stop with Return of the Jedi, Luke's sister was revealed to be Leia, just to wrap things up neatly. 
number one. Was Darth Vader always going to be Luke's father? Originally, Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader were two different characters. As we've discussed before, Leia Brackett wrote the first draft script for The Empire Strikes Back. Sadly, she died of cancer a month after turning in the draft. She wrote the screenplay based on Lucas's ideas, and in that version, not only was Darth Vader not Luke's father, but he got to meet the Force Ghost version of his father, Anakin Skywalker. Lucas then came up with the new plot elements for the story, rewrote the script, and hired Lawrence Kasdan to polish it up for him. Okay, so that wraps up the first episode of That Sci-Fi Show with 10 Star Wars Urban Legends Part 1. Click here to see 5 more Star Wars Urban Legends debunked in Part 2. If you give this video a thumbs up, go straight around the interwebs, or just leave a mean-spirited comment below. <laughs> this is the subscribe button you're looking for. Until next time, I'm Jay Parks. <laughs>